Katu Solar Project actually had quite a long lead time. I think we've been involved since about 2013. Um, yeah, sort of late 2013, early 2014. There's a whole bidding process, um, so there's quite a lot of work that goes into the project before it actually reaches financial close and it actually starts being built. It's a 12 billion rand deal, um, which means 12 billion rand buys you the whole project, you build the entire power plant, and that's obviously contributed um, by debt and equity, um, and it's 70% debt and 30% equity. Um, and the investors are obviously international parties and uh, local investors. Um, and the banks who've provided the 70% of debt are also just all local banks and DFIs. So quite a nice South African project, um, quite large numbers as well, um, which normally means that you've got quite a few investors and banks funding. What's nice about CSP, I think, is because, first of all, it's renewable energy, which is clean energy, and the world is obviously moving in that direction. Um, it's, also, um, it's also nice in that it has storage. So whereas other forms of renewable energy, say wind and solar, um, can generate at a certain time of the day and may not be able to generate power at peak times, like in South Africa, our peak times are early in the morning and late in the evenings. Um, so, yeah, so CSP has got storage, which means you can generate the power and store the heat at a, a, in, a, in a molten salt solution, and you can actually dispatch the power onto the, onto the grid when you need the power most. So those are at those peak times. So it, it's nice in that it has, it's sort of the best of both worlds in terms of being renewable, um, being easily dispatchable, but also being able to dispatch when we actually need the power um, during the peak times. So that's what's quite nice about the technology and I think what, um, what drives the incentivization of um, CSP projects. As you'll know, in the REAP program, uh, the tariff structure for CSP projects is structured such that you are incentivized to dispatch at night um, because obviously government wants to uh, get the power when they need it the most. around 470 jobs during the construction period and that drops down during the operation period to about 81 jobs and that is um, obviously jobs around the community so the project is located around the Katu area so 10 kilometers from the actual town of Katu and so those will be jobs for people in the area around the community um, and there's also a significant amount of social economic development spend in the area right to develop schools and facilities around the area for the community um, and there's also a localization um, component where 42% of the qualifying spend has to be procured locally. So I think the government is trying to ensure that within the REAP program, um, quite a lot is done to, to, to give back to the community and to make sure that not only are these projects developed, but also the communities around them benefit from these projects being in these remote locations. RMB obviously loves clean energy. Um, uh, we are, we are, we've got an infrastructure team that looks at all infrastructure, energy, power in general, um, and that includes other technologies, that includes gas, that includes um, coal, everything. But also, I mean, these projects are nice because there's a social element to it. Um, but also they're right up our alley. I mean, we la we, we, that's what we do for a living. I mean, that's what we wake up thinking about every day, how do we finance power? Um, and the nice thing about it is that, I mean, Africa in general as a continent is a power hungry continent. And a lot of the economic growth is dependent on power and a lot of the countries are power scarce. And so we try to look at solutions every day of how can we uh, do our little bit in getting uh, the rest of Africa electrified as well as South Africa.